Suppose we were asked to solve these two systems of linear equations. That wouldn't be too tremendously difficult, but you might notice that these two systems have the exact same setup on the left. x1 minus 5x2, x1 minus 5x2, and so on. So if we were to construct the augmented matrix for this system and for this one, the coefficient matrix would be exactly the same. The coefficients here are 1, 3, negative 5, 2, 1, 3, negative 5, 2. We can actually use Gauss-Jordan elimination or Gaussian elimination to solve both of these systems at the same time because their coefficient matrices are the same. Here it is. It's like we set up an augmented matrix for one system. Here's the coefficients. Here are the constants. But why not do both at the same time? We can just throw in another column of constants from the other system of equations because the coefficients are exactly the same. By performing Gauss-Jordan elimination or Gaussian elimination on this matrix, we can solve both systems at the same time. Here are the steps we would take. We change row 2 by subtracting three copies of row 1, and that way we introduce a 0 below that leading 1. Then we multiply row 2 by 1 over 17 to make that a 1. And then we add five copies of row 2 to row 1 in order to get rid of that negative 5. And then here we are, we've got the solutions. This first column of constants represents the solutions to the first system of equations. So this system here with 1 and 4, what are the solutions? The solutions are here and here, which we see in that first column of constants. And similarly for the second system, its solutions are given in the second column of constants. Let's see one more example with 3 by 3. Again, here we are asked to solve two systems of linear equations. That could be a lot of work, but notice their coefficients are exactly the same. Negative 1, 1, 6, negative 1, 1, 6, and so on. It's just the constants on the right side that are different. So once again, we can set up an augmented matrix for both systems simultaneously by having a column for these constants and a column for these constants attached to the same coefficient matrix. And here is that matrix. Those are the coefficients. And then here are the constants from the first system. And here are the constants from the second system. I've then performed Gauss-Jordan elimination just to make sure the notation is clear. In this example, you could see row 1 is added to row 2. Because row 2 is written first, the change is being made to row 2. For example, 6 copies of row 1 are added to row 3. 28 copies of row 2 are subtracted from row 3. I won't walk you through this whole thing. Hopefully you understand Gauss-Jordan elimination at this point. If not, link in the description to my lesson going over it. In the end, we end up with this reduced row echelon matrix. And so we've solved both systems of equations. Here is the first one, and we can see from this column of constants that the solutions are x1 equals negative 18, x2 equals negative 1, and x3 equals negative 14. For the second system of equations, we look at the second column of constants and see the solution is x1 equals negative 172, x2 equals negative 21, and x3 equals negative 90. And that's how you can use the techniques we've discussed to solve two systems of linear equations simultaneously, provided, of course, that their coefficient matrix is the same. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my Linear Algebra course and Linear Algebra Exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching. Uh, uh, I'm the mathematical menace, the machinations of mankind, two calculators at the same time, hand signs and abacus, finger count and calculus. I'm the V to the T, my parameter, the rapidest. Happens like this, my lectures, the most prominent, dominant. Call me the Morgan, I get the compliments. The union in together like any time that we intersect, cause my opponents know they need.